this last and someone uh, was a servant. Let's pray and come in our time to the Lord. Father, we thank you for creating us in your image and your likeness. We thank you for the life of Mary Lou Walker. Thank you for the way that she has blessed many of us. Thank you for the chance that we had to get to know her. And we know that she is with you. And we praise you for that. We praise you for the sacrifice that you have made on our behalf to make this future reunion possible. This is not a goodbye like the world says. This is a see you later.
but suppose one fellow he die, let me know something, this fellow let me know something, nothing. Psalm 116, 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Come up in Tokai 26. On Monday, he came back long, this fellow would not want time. God, he make him want to be long, and yet, now I can not know us. Number two, die, and we know that strong, we know, down in all this better line. No God. All by is that priest belong God, not be known Christ. Now all by is that king one time Christ, but this bella one time so near. Revelation 26. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and will reign with him for a thousand years. First Corinthians 15, 52, 58. But brother, me talk straight to the plan. Man belong, this background, and me know enough. He go inside now, he don't belong God, now. This is more good than something belong him. Now, something belong, bagger up, and me know enough. This is something in us a bagger up. You plan, hurry. Me like how you think one that talk, I know you plan. But you mean all that you know that. That's all. By you me all the time. He said this night, come up another time. This club by come up one, two, that's all. Long time, we don't last. We could cry. Yes. We could buy a cry. Now, all money in there, finish by it, come up. Now, all you know, you know, what are more? Now, do me. Thanks be to God. 
He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Mary Lou has to be loved hymns, <clears throat> loved singing hymns. We sang them together in Bible study quite a lot. As we were looking at, looking through hymns, trying to figure out which one would be sing. Uh, this first one, Praise to the Lord the Almighty, number eight in your hymnals. Praise to the Lord the Almighty. We picked this one for a couple reasons. I should say I picked this one for a couple reasons. First, the, the writer, Yoki Meander, wrote this in the year he died, and he was battling with tuberculosis as he wrote these words. Second, this is also one that was sung at her funeral about 16 hours ago. Praise to the Lord the Almighty. We'll stand and sing all the words.
um, through half of this box. <laughs> Mary Lou valued her family and friendships above, above most everything else. Her kids' friends became adopted members of her family. Her work friends became almost like sisters. And she considered her Bible study friends an intimate, as intimate members of her God-given family. Throughout the years, we've raised our kids together, and now, as a bunch of empty nesters, or near-empty nesters, we depend on the fellowship to keep us on the field and on track in the Lord's service. Mary Lou was the glue that kept us going. A few hours ago, in New York, there was another memorial service where Steve and the kids, Mary Lou's large extended family, and many friends gathered to remember her. The Husks, the Chrysas, and the Runias represented our Bible study there. Because once a member of the Walker Bible Study, always a member of the Bible, Walker Bible Study, we received a number of tributes from around the world that Maggie and I would like to read. The first one is from Kathy Husk. She and Tim are on the right now. She says, I first met Mary Lou 20 years ago, about a week after our family arrived in Grandpa. In typical Mary Lou fashion, she stopped and introduced herself and said, You're Tim Husk's wife, aren't you? He used to be in our Bible study back when he was here as a single guy. Would you like to come to our Bible study this week? Well, we did, and we remained in the same Bible study ever since. Over the years, I grew to know Mary, and I grew to know and love Mary Lou very much. Like many of us who served together for years, our friends can become a part of our family. Sharing life experiences here on the mission field has a way of drawing people closer together. She was my big sister. I was thinking about all the things that Mary Lou loved. Coffee, gardening, scrabble, reading, 500-piece or larger jigsaw puzzles, cooking delicious meals, baking, especially pie and tea rings, I think we all have her recipes, don't we? <laughs> Cross-stitch, music, if you ever saw her cassette collection, you would know that. Uh, making us laugh, sitting and talking with friends, serving others, especially through hospitality. I think Mary Lou and Steve get the award for having the most guests over for dinner over the years of service here. She also loved sharing the love of Jesus with those who came across her path. In recent months, Mary Lou had more than her share of opportunities to share about her faith, especially during her hospital stays. This summer, she wrote to me, My roommate is an older woman, Tina. We've become quite good friends, and we've talked a lot about spiritual things. This morning, I was able to tell her about God's free gift of salvation. It has been very exciting to discuss God's love. I'm not sure if she has accepted Jesus as her Savior, but I think she's close. Very cool. <laughs> Mary Lou told me she'd been reading the book Out of Their Faces and Into Their Shoes. This has made an impact on her, and she was even more encouraged to share her faith after having read this book. Looking up to Mary Lou as a big sister, she inspired me to have more people over for a meal, to read a book that she would recommend, to plant a flower, to put a puzzle together, to try a new recipe, to pick up that person who's trudging up the hill. And I can blame her for getting me started drinking coffee. <laughs> Most of all, she inspired me to be a better Christian, to not just live my faith, but to seek more opportunities to share my faith. Mary Lou is my big sister, and I want to be just like her. From Bonnie Price. Mary Lou, known to our daughter Rebecca as Aunt May Lou, back in the days when she couldn't say her R's or L's. I can't imagine being a PNG without Steve, Lou, and the cousins. What a neat thing it was to be able to share in birthdays, 10 per year, together as family, plus other occasions, and to watch the kids grow up together. Aunt Mary Lou was such a tease to the kids and a fun person to be around. She loved to play board games after supper and taught us how to play ones we'd never heard of before. We love Mary Lou and we'll miss her being with us in person. She is no doubt enjoying the beauty of heaven, the loving, and loving the music, laughter, and doing things she couldn't do with her failing physical condition. We're looking forward to seeing her again. Lynn Onkin writes, Remembering Mary Lou, wonderful hospitality, great meals, 
warm fellowship, very special sense of humor, <laughs> when to laugh and when to take her seriously. These are among our first impressions of Mary Lou. As we got to know her better, we also appreciated the depth of her faith in God, her willingness to admit that she had questions, and to wonder what God was up to on their behalf. Although we remember very well the sore muscles and mosquito attacks from Sunday afternoon shuffleboard games, and never being able to beat the dynamic walker duo, what really stands out is the automatic invitation for a cup of coffee and a piece of pie that followed. Whether we were sharing deeply from our hearts, or just keeping up each other up to date on phone, email, Facebook, or in person, Mary Lou wanted to be a part of my life, and it was a privilege to be a part of hers. Mary Lou enjoyed people. She spent time with people, and she cared about them. She loved working in the post office. Assisting members with their furlough mail, working hand-in-hand -hand with the post office ladies over the years. She even agreed to be stretched way out of her comfort zone by working in the DAP office because it kept her in contact with people. It was hard to watch her energy levels go down so much that she couldn't do the things that she enjoyed. One of the last things I see Mary Lou doing is singing, and I imagine she's doing that right now. And going back a number of years, Linda Lynn Ross Webb. Lots to remember about Mary Lou, but for a translation team, there could have been no better support team. Not sure they were ever official, but the first meals back from the village were a feast. The boys always looked forward to the purple pop, and we to the latest escapades of our shared gardener. Always plenty to laugh about over dinner. Later, after we left, Mary Lou kept it up organizing things for our trips back on occasions with capable assistance of Stevie. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and had her finger on the pulse of every possibility. She even went the extra mile and cared for our Irumu men when they came to Ukurumpa. They'll remember her, and so will we. With love to Stephen family, Lyndall and Ross Webb. Larry and Marcia Jones, who were the most recent ones to leave. Mary Lee Walker was such a combination of wonderful attributes. We think, of course, of her quick wit and her dry, and yes, she uses the word here, often sarcastic humor. <laughs> Let's face it, she was a sarcastic woman. <laughs> and we can laugh with that memory. We think of her other centered centeredness and can revel in the times that we were recipients of her love. We remember her love of flowers and nature and picture ourselves wandering around her yard enjoying its beauty. We know of her love for family and have seen that manifested time and again. We remember sitting at her table and being served scrumptious meals, Mexican anyone, and fabulous desserts. Key lime pie is Larry's favorite. I, Marcia, remember talking with and praying with her in the director's office as she was experiencing pain and discouragement with her health issues. Nevertheless, she was committed to her work and determined to continue on. <laughs> Such tenacity in the face of pain and discomfort. Mary Lou was a true encourager and took to heart Hebrews 3.13. Encourage one another daily as long as it is called today. Praise God that her today is now in the arms of Jesus. And from Connie Rumia. Lauren and I first came to PNG in 1986. So we have known Mary Lou for a lot of years. Steve and Mary Lou are like family to us. As we were riding in the car from Montana to New York to attend Mary Lou's funeral in the States, we spent a lot of time reminiscing about what a special lady Mary Lou was. These are some of the memories that I will really cherish about her. Mary Lou was one of the most hospitable women I've ever known. She opened their home to so many people. I can't begin to count the times that we were invited to their house for a meal and a few games of shuffleboard afterwards. You could tell that having guests was a real joy for her. She had something about her that you just always felt comfortable in her home and around her. Hospitality was a gift that she used to be a blessing to a lot of people. Mary Lou was a lot of fun. She had such a unique sense of humor. I loved being around her. We had so many good times and so many laughs together. She was always herself, and I feel blessed to have known Mary Lou and that she considered me her friend. Mary Lou loved her garden and her flowers. So often we take a walk in the evening and go past their house, and Mary Lou would be outside reading her flower beds. She told me once, I know there's going to be flowers in heaven. As most of you probably know, Mary Lou was quite political. 
My husband, Lauren, was just saying yesterday that he never even heard of Rush Limbaugh until he met Mary Lou. <laughs> I admire her for standing up for things that she thought were right and for trying to have a godly influence on things like her country. We were in Steve and Mary Lou's Bible study for a lot of years, and we had a lot of really special times singing together as a group. Mary Lou loved the old hymns. She always shared so freely about things on her heart. More than anything else, I'll remember Mary Lou as being a godly woman with a real servant heart. When I heard that Mary Lou had passed away, the Lord immediately put a picture in my mind of her standing at the gates of heaven and the Lord saying, Well done, good and faithful servant. I feel so sad that she is gone, but so thankful that she is in a place so incredible that we can't begin to imagine what it's like. And that someday we're going to join her and will be with the Lord for eternity. Last one from our Bible study is technically from me. We didn't hear back from Neil and Carol, which surprised me, so I'm just assuming they're on the road. But I have a Neil story to tell. Um, a few years ago at Bible study, when Neil and Carol were in it, uh, they had just come back from Berlo, and Neil had attended his 40 year class reunion. And he brought back a little booklet that you get there that where people write what's going on in their lives and their accomplishments and achievements. And he wanted to read one of them to us, um, someone who had caught his attention in the book. And there's a woman who had probably listed among her accomplishments of the last 40 years that she was an avid rubber stamper. And Neil just stopped and said it again, an avid rubber stamper. And we were all struck that night by that thought. Really? That's it? I mean, your whole life, and that's what you have to say is you're an avid rubber stamper? And it, that struck all of us that we wanted our lives to be more than that. And now, obviously, there's nothing wrong with rubber stamping. And <laughs> as many people have, have pointed out in their letters, Mary Lou was an avid gardener and an avid um, cross-stitcher. She was never at Bible study without her cross-stitching. Boy, if you took the chair with the good light next to it, <laughs> then it had to move because she needed the light for her cross-stitching. And she was an avid jigsaw puzzle or puzzle -er. <laughs> but, but that wasn't the sum of her life. And Mary Lou lived beyond just herself, and she lived beyond what made her happy. She loved her hobbies, and she loved her family, but she loved God and loved serving Him even more. She used her gifts to serve God and to bring Him glory. And we are richer people for having had Mary Lou, the avid child of God, in our lives. Um, the one contribution I, well, not the one, but the first contribution I made to putting the service together was saying, we have to do the sevenfold amen at the end. The last time that our Bible study um, led the Sunday morning service, that was Mary Lou's thing. She said, we always sang that when I was growing up. We got to sing that as a group. And we all were like, oh, sure, okay. And then we practiced it, and two-thirds of the group quit because it was hard. <laughs> and I said, Mary Lou, I can sing it as long as you're standing next to me, and I can follow your alto part, and I can do it. So as long as Mary Lou was standing next to me, I stayed in the group, and we did the sevenfold on that. So we're going to try that again today. I think we said we're going to try it twice because, you know, first time through we have to learn that. Second time through we'll actually sing it. One more thing. Rebecca had a few things that she wanted to say but was afraid that she couldn't talk over her tears. So I'll say them for her. One was that when Rebecca's husband found out that he had diabetes, Rebecca was worried and anxious. But Mary Lou told her, Rebecca, I've had diabetes since I was in my 20s, and I'm doing fine. Rebecca said, but you don't act like you're sick, and you're so happy. Exactly, said Mary Lou, and I know where I'm going when I die. Also, when Rebecca was saying goodbye to Mary Lou, Rebecca was saddened that she may never see Mary Lou again. And Mary Lou told her, my friend Kathy is waiting for me in heaven. She'll have a pot of coffee ready. Oh, you like tea, Rebecca. So look for me at the Eastern Gate. I'll have the tea ready. We'll be best friends forever. <laughs> well, I couldn't have shared that myself either. Um, those are the memories from our Bible study, for the most part. But we know that all of you have good memories of Mary Lou as well. So Bruce and Paul are going to lead us in one more hymn, and then it's your opportunity to come up and share. I know a lot of you would rather not come stand on a platform with the podium and a microphone, but because we're videotaping this for the walkers and sending it to them, we want them to be able to see you and hear you as well. So as hard as it may be, please come stand up here um, to share when that time comes. <coughs> Thank you.
Please turn your hymnals to <clears throat> number 496. 496, He Hideth My Soul. And we had no idea when we put this hymn, and this time it was a we, not just I. Um, the things that would be read just now uh, about Mary Lou and so on, and about where she is. But I think when you sing this hymn and think about these words and where, what her current situation is, uh, you know, hidden in the cleft of a rock, um, it, it's, it's pretty easy. Let's stand in the Oh, and we will sit still. <clears throat> and we will sing all four verses because Mary Lou had most of these memorized, and she only wrote the third verses for most all of these hymns.
next I started a, a verse here from Isaiah 57. It's actually uh, read in Damien Smith's memorial service. Uh, wow. Does it ever fit? Fits most services in, uh, funeral type services anyway, but boy, does it really fit for me to Isaiah 57, 1 and 2. The righteous man perishes, and no one lays it to heart. Devout men are taken away, while no one understands. For the righteous man is taken away from calamity. He enters into peace. They rest in their beds who walk in. Oh, 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 and to make it a little nicer for you, there are steps in the back here, so it's easy to get a big step to come up here. Um, please come if you have something to share. Uh, Isaiah 57. I was not part of the inner circle, but part of the outer circle, ministering to some of the children, the Walker children. So this morning, we missed having Mary Lou singing with Sue Russell and Becky Reefing and others. I remember Mary Lou saying her memories of growing up were of buckets of diapers on nappies because she came from such a big family. She was well known, as you heard, for her pies. I have memories of her selling soup at craft fairs, her sense of humour, it was very painful seeing her drag herself up the steps here between the meeting house and the director's office. And I want to say to you, Daniel and Nick, as you're seeking jobs and places to live, I'm praying for you. For Ben and Maggie, in your decision making. And Steve and Julie, I'm praying that God will lead you back here, especially since your house hasn't sold and we need people at Christmas sorting our Christmas now. <laughs> in March, uh, my family was at the Wycliffe Connection down in Orlando, and the Walkers were there as well. And I didn't really know Mary Lou very well before then, but um, <clears throat> after Connection, I called my mom, Debbie Wolf. I said, Mom, Mary Lou Walker's really funny. And she's like, I know. And I said, but I don't think she realizes how funny she is. And I remember one time um, we were in class and we were talking about, um, like, talking to your churches and people coming up to you and stuff. And Mary Lou said, <clears throat> all these people keep bouncing up to me and saying, so how was P&G? And she's like, what am I supposed to say? All right, thank you. And we all just, I mean, she can say like two words and the whole class just dies laughing. And um, it was really amazing. And um, <clears throat> I was thinking when my mom, or maybe it was Maggie, read about, you know, going to the gates and them saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. I can imagine going, oh, it's not Tom. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's nice to know that all of us are going to get to enjoy the minors someday again, but I think I'll mostly remember about Mary Lou. Great, I'll move on the pregnancy. It's <laughs> um, how much she loved my mom and dad. And um, it didn't matter if they were gone for six months or a year or two weeks on vacation, she was always at the airport to see them in. And often would lead us to the airport and just be standing there. You know, she wasn't very late. But, you know, always glad to see them and welcome them back in her own special way. Probably love them more than I do, but who <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to say to Julie, though, when you're watching this, that we love you and we miss you and our arms are hurting because we want to put them around you and hug you. And, um, we look forward to seeing you again someday, Julie, and welcoming you back into the class and the youth group. So. Most of them, at least, and so 
Um, I have known Julie since I was six years old when I met her at daycare. And <laughs> therefore, <laughs> Mrs. Walker was like a second mom to me. During the countless days and the many sleepovers spent at the Walker's house, Mrs. Walker was always willing to sacrifice some of her time to cook delicious meals, of course, and to just sometimes sit down and talk to Julie and I and whatever other friends might have been there at the time. Her, her physical body might not have been the strongest, but we all know that her spiritual heart was, especially during the year 2010 when the family had to finish their work here and leave finish, of course, to the States due to Mrs. Walker's illness. She was still able to maintain, of course, her sense of humor and her worry-free spirit, which assured the rest of the family that everything would be okay. And everything is okay now. On the day that I found out about Mrs. Walker's passing, it was near the end of school, so I just took my friend Petra and my friend Joe, and we just sat on the couch and stared at the walls because we were too shocked to do anything else. And so, out of the corner of my eye, I saw my mom's Bible lying on the coffee table, and I picked it up and turned to Ecclesiastes 3, a time for everything. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to grow away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. For us here in Columba, it's a time to mourn for Mary Lou. But for Mary Lou, it was not only a time to die, but a time to be born again into heaven, and also a time to dance along the streets of gold there. And we all know that she was in our hearts, and we're not going to forget her. Um, you guys want to say anything? <laughs> you're watching this, I um, just want to, love, want to let you know that we do love you, and we wish we were there. Like Kelly said, we wish we could give you a big hug, because we miss you so much. And come back. <laughs> Miss Betty Kenya, we need to uh, walk us through my son's uh, relationship with this with the boys. Michael, he um, grew up with the Walker boys. Walker's home was like a second home for him. And um, yes, as soon as I see Mary Lou, she was so loving, and she was so sweet, and she liked people. And um, every time when I come across her, she, she cheers me up. And there was uh, one time when our boys were in uh, ninth or tenth grade, we decided as parents, as moms, uh, Dee and Riri and Jenna Tides, and I and Mary Walker, we had a prayer time for our boys. On every Saturday morning. So that's how I got to Mary Lou. That's how I got to uh, know Mary Lou Walker more closer. And we really established a very friendly, uh, nice relationship because we've been praying for our boys that their friendship will continue on after they leave school. And then that also can continue with, our, with the parents. As parents, if you stay here, you also had a good relationship with each other. So um, I would like to uh, 
uh, say to Steve and the boys that we will be keeping you in our prayers and may the peace of God be with you all.
I had to play instead because she wasn't here, and um, I was really scared. And that same day, I had, um, my house was broken into, and I was really scared and nervous. But um, as I played the piano, I could hear Mrs. Walker's alto voice. <laughs> And it just gave me this strength. Like her voice was a strength from God, and I was able to play through. And it was so encouraging with her voice. And um, to Julie and Mr. Walker, um, I really miss you guys, and I hope you'll be able to come back soon. You're always welcome here. Mr. <laughs> did a wonderful job. <laughs>
Bow in word prayer, please. <clears throat> Loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us Mary Lou. We so enjoyed her friendship, her humor, her perseverance, and her hospitality. We admired her willingness to serve you. <coughs> To serve you even when it was uncomfortable. We admired her love for her family, her many multicultural friendships, and her love of nature. Mary Lou challenged us to evangelize the world, to live a life of transparency, and to not take life too seriously. We will deeply miss her. But we know that you hold her now and have given her the rest she so desperately needed. Father, what we saw in Mary Lou was Jesus Christ reflected in and through her. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, if there is anyone within the sound of my voice who has not yielded their life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, as Mary Lou did. Please, Lord, may they not waste another day of their life. Thank you for the gift of Mary Lou. And we ask, Father, for your comfort for the family in these days. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. In closing, we invite you to turn to number 628. 628. Amen. And struggle through this with us as we always did. <clears throat> 628. We've got to make sure we're really all on the same page here. 628. There's two pages there. So the right page, the lower right side, it's Roman numeral 9, I X there. Seven folds. It's for the seven fold Amen. Uh, well, as Maggie said earlier, we often didn't do it well enough the first time. Ah, I'll do it again. So we'll see how we all do. Um, Renee is, is going to play for us. He'll spell out our notes for us here to start. And then we'll give it a crack. <coughs>
right behind us in the center here, and up here in front as well. So please feel free to mingle with each other, but also to sign the cards in one of those spots. Thank you very much.